I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work <laughs> is to love what you do. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nikhil Reddy. I make videos about personal growth, education, and technology. And in July of 2005, Steve Jobs took to the podium to address Stanford's graduating class in his commencement speech. Wearing jeans and sandals under his formal robe, Jobs addressed a crowd of 23,000 people with a short speech that drew lessons from his life. About a third of the way in, he offered a piece of advice about his work. Essentially, he said that the key to occupational happiness is to first figure out what you're passionate about and then find a job that matches this passion. Clearly, you don't have to look very far to see how this is one of the most storied and privileged narratives in American society. We are bombarded from a very young age and told that we have to follow our passions or else we're not going to be happy or successful or worse, we're going to live a life of mediocrity. We are told to support the ones who have the courage to follow their own passions and pity the ones who cling to the safe path. But at the core of all of this, there's a problem lurking. When you look past the feel-good slogans and go deeper into the details of how passionate people like Steve Jobs really got started, the issue becomes much more complicated. If you had met a young Steve Jobs in the years leading up to his founding of Apple Computer, you wouldn't have pegged him as someone who was particularly passionate about starting a technology company. He wasn't interested in business or electronics as a student. Instead, he studied Western history and dance and Eastern mysticism. Jobs eventually dropped out of college after his first year, but remained on campus for a while, sleeping on floors and scrounging for free meals at the local Hare Krishna temple. He eventually got a job at Atari, but quickly left in order to make a spiritual journey throughout India. And on returning home, he began to train seriously at the nearby Los Altos Zen Center. I point to this story not to be disrespectful, but simply to show you that these do not represent the actions of someone who was born as a passionate being about technology and science specifically. In fact, this was only a year before Steve Jobs started Apple Computer, and it looked like the whole time he was a conflicted young man, dabbling in electronics only when it promised to earn him quick cash and mostly focus on spiritual enlightenment. And ultimately, it was with this very confused, dispassionate mindset that Steve Steve Jobs set out and eventually started Apple Computer. He quickly jumped into a new business opportunity with Steve Wozniak after he noticed that the local computer heads were excited by the introduction of model kits and how they could assemble them at home. Jobs pitched Wozniak the idea of designing one of these computer kit circuit boards so that they could sell them to local hobbyists. Jobs jumped at the opportunity to make an even larger amount of money and began scrounging together startup capital. It was in this unexpected windfall that Apple computer was born. The story of Steve Jobs is really important because when it comes to finding fulfilling work, details matter, and you should rather do what he did and not necessarily what he said. If a young Steve Jobs had taken his own advice and decided to pursue only work he loved, then he would have probably been a teacher at some spiritual center. But he didn't follow the simple advice that he gave in a speech. And so ultimately, the question becomes, how do we find something we love enough to create a long and sustainable career that will also make us successful and happy? Personally for me, I've always believed that the answer lies in pursuing careers and experiences that are radically different from each other. I think as human beings, we are very very good at summarizing ourselves in the context of what we are currently good at. We think that because we studied something in college or have one job in it, that means that we have to define our future solely in terms of that particular industry. But the reality is you can do whatever you choose and you can pursue new experiences like the snap of a finger. And that's what I encourage all of you to do as well. Most importantly, by being open and detached and forcing yourself to try new things, you will not only fuel your growth as a multi-talented human being, but it will help you find that activity or passion that you are genuinely excited to wake up in the morning for. And in my opinion, every human being owes themselves the chance to do so. And with that, I will leave you guys. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nikhil Reddy. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down below with a like, a comment, maybe a subscription to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I am also very active. And last but certainly not least, I will always see you guys in the next one.